Morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, in this video I'm going to look at um, my D500 in comparison to my Z6 II for wildlife photography. Now I've had both of these cameras for uh, quite a few years now so I think that leaves me in a, a good position to make a comparison. Now I've ne I'm not getting paid by anybody to do this video, I own both of these cameras so it's a, an honest sort of um, uh, appraisal of the merits of both of these cameras for wildlife photography. Now, um, so here's um, D my D500 DSLR and here's my Nikon Z62 mirrorless camera body. And they've got pros and cons for both of these uh, camera bodies when it comes to wildlife photography. And I think um, one of the most important things is the type of wildlife photography you do. And we'll come on to that later on in this video. Uh, but I think the first thing I wanna talk about is autofocus because when it comes to um, you know, photograph in nature, uh, especially fast moving uh, wildlife such as birds in flight, the camera body you use does have a big impact. Uh, I think it's hard to buy a bad camera now. I think they've all got great image quality, uh, generally good noise control, but when it comes to fast moving action, the camera body is important. And one of the most important things is how good is the autofocus. And uh, I think the autofocus on both these camera bodies is really good. But um, the one thing it hasn't got neither of these cameras have got is uh, bird eye detect. So uh, if you've got a, a Canon R5 or an R6 or a one of the Sonys uh, or one of the Olymp uh, top Olympus cameras or uh, even the, the Nikon Z9 you will have bird eye detect and I think that's great because I think that's a real leap forward in autofocus uh, design. However these are still really good. Now I tend to use my Z6 II um, in the same way as I use my D500. So in other words if I'm photographing a static subject like a bird on a, a perch uh, on a stick then I, I can use single AF and I'll be using a single AF point and getting it on that bird's head and that would work the same for both of these cameras. Um, if I'm doing a moving animal then I would use a set of group autofocus points and uh, with the Z6 II the smallest set of group autofocus points I can choose are nine points and with the D500 it's five points. So I think the D500 would be slightly preferable for me because I think the smaller uh, set of group points is a little bit more accurate but it still gives you the flexibility so you don't get that have to get that centre point bang on the bird's head. So I think that would be a, a slight advantage but not a massive one. When it comes uh, to, in terms of autofocus speed and accuracy, I think the D500 and the Z6 II are fairly similar actually. And that's a great... Um, advert for the D500 isn't it because this camera is a much older body but I would say in terms of autofocus speed and accuracy it's as good as the Z6 II but they're both they're both great and I use both of these for wildlife photography. This first image was taken with my D500 and as you can see it's a bird uh, in a static position just perching on a stick and I was using a single AF point and I was focusing on the bird's eye. And it's a very sharp picture and you'd expect this from a static subject. The autofocus hasn't had any problems focusing on this bird. Now if we look at the second image, this was taken with the Z6 II. Again it's a, a, a bird that's not moving, it's just perched and it's a very sharp picture. And again I was using a single AF point uh, focusing on the eye that's nearest to the camera. So in both of these pictures the autofocus uh, has worked really well, the pictures are sharp and there's no problem whatsoever. Now if we look at um, the third picture, the Osprey, that again was taken with my D500 and now we've got an action shot. So I switch to the five autofocus points and uh, I've got the central autofocus point on the bird's head and the picture's sharp, the autofocus has worked really well, the camera's had no problem focusing on this Osprey. And then if we look at the second uh, image in this section, uh, the Egret, this was taken with the Z6 II. Again, moving subject, the autofocus is locked on well, the picture's sharp, and I was using the group of nine points here. So for both these action pictures, the autofocus system has worked really well, and I don't think I would complain about either of those. I don't tend to use the more um, automatic modes when it comes to the uh, autofocus. So I don't use the 3D uh, tracking on the D500 because I, I know some people really like it, but I've never found it to be uh, accurate enough for me. Uh, and I, I don't use the, let the camera pick the autofocus points for me. And it's the same with the Z6 II. So the only two uh, um, types of autofocus modes I use 
are the, as I say, the, the single point and the group, um, type, the group points. Um, so I don't really, you know, want to go delve too deeply into the rest of the autofocus system. Suffice to say that, you know, they're fairly even, I would say. The biggest difference between the Z6 II and the D500 is sensor size. The D500 is an APS-C sensor, which is a crop sensor, and the, D, uh, the Z6 II is a full frame sensor. Um, and bear in mind that there's a few years between um, this camera being first produced and this camera. Uh, that also helps when it comes to noise control. So the full frame sensor is going to be better at high ISO noise control and this is a more modern camera. So I think when it comes to high ISO performance the Z6 II uh, would um, take the award here but you know the D500 is still excellent when it comes to a high ISO noise control which is important when you're photographing fast moving action in a low light situation. The uh, frames per second rate on the D500 is 10 frames per second maximum uh, and the uh, frame rate at its very high setting is 14 frames per second uh, for the Z6 II. Now again there's not a massive difference between the two. Uh, I don't find it to be hugely uh, a big advantage having an extra few frames per second on the Z6 II. Uh, I've quite comfortably been using the D500 uh, and I find 10 frames a second is absolutely fine. Now I know uh, you look at a lot of uh, a lot of top range cameras and they'll be doing 20 30 frames a second. It's handy to have in some on some occasions but I find that the frame rate on both these cameras is fine. The first picture in this section was taken using my D500 and I'm shooting at 10 frames per second. And what I tend to do when I'm taking an action shot like this, I wait for the bird to get a little bit fidgety and the minute it makes a move to take off, I hit the shutter button and I'm running at 10 frames per second. And as you can see, at that frame rate, I've captured the bird taking off, it's sort of in mid-flight. And I've used the same technique on the second picture and that's shot using my Z6 II. So there's not a, a massive difference between the 10 frames per second or the 14 frames per second. In both cases I've captured the bird mid-flight but it's also very much a case of getting the timing right as well. The resolution of each sensor is different but it's not hugely different to be honest. Um, the D500 is a 20.9 megapixel sensor, uh, the Z6 II has a 24.5 megapixel sensor. So the Z6 II, you know, at first look has got more resolution and that resolution is spread out over a bigger sensor. So image quality will be better, obviously. But the only thing is because um, the angle of view on the cropped sensored body though, so the D500 is more narrow or narrower, um, it means that uh, if we were to take the same uh, image from the same starting point using the same lens, the image will be smaller on the Z6 II than it is on the D500. So I'd need to crop down the Z6 II frame in order to get the same size uh, picture of that animal, uh, whatever it is I'm photographing. So the resolution is better on the Z6 II, but I don't think it's a big enough difference to make a huge difference to the image quality when you compare it to the D500. So again, I wouldn't rule out the D500 because it's an APS-C sensor against the Z6 II. Um, I just think that uh, pound for pound, the Z6 II will give you a better quality image. And if you can get closer to the subject, so the um, animal would be be the same size in the frame as it would be on the D500 if you were standing further back then the Z6 II would take the prize but you can't often do that so again I wouldn't rule out the D500 because it's an APS-C sensor. One of the reasons a lot of people buy a mirrorless camera body is for weight. Um, you know some of the uh, DSL DSLRs can be really bulky and really big but in fact there's not a huge difference in weight. Um, the uh, D500 I think is 760 grams and the Z6 II is 705 and if you add you know a big lens uh, onto the end of either of these cameras you're not going to notice a big difference. Um, battery life though is quite important and uh, a mirrorless camera body will always use up more battery power than a DLS DSLR so the battery power of the D500 the battery is going to last longer than it will in the, Z, in the uh, Z6 II. So that's an advantage for the, um, the D500. But then I think the electronic viewfinder is such a big 
big advantage when it comes to uh, fast paced action photography because what you see is what you get so when you're looking through the viewfinder and you, you have to, if you have to make quick changes in uh, exposure you're going to see that in the viewfinder with the D500 you're going to have to wait look at the picture check the exposure on the, on the back of the camera and by then that action might have finished so even though these S6 II will take less pictures per battery than say a DSLR, I do think the electronic viewfinder is a massive, massive uh, advantage. The only thing with the, the Z6 II, and I find this dead irritating, is if the camera goes to sleep um, it, and uh, then something happens in front of you and you hit the shutter button, it takes a little while for that uh, EVF, electronic viewfinder, to wake up and potentially uh, you can miss a, a, an image. So um, again, you know, it's horses for courses. I love the EVF. I would like it to uh, start up more quickly. Uh, it gives me a lot more information, but an optical viewfinder is always ready. There's no start up time. So, you know, it's almost um, a no score draw here. At the beginning of this video I mentioned it really depends on what type of wildlife photography you do as to which body might be best for you. Now if you only shoot stills, so still pictures, then I would probably go for the D500. It's at least half the price, I think it's out of production now, uh, so I don't think in most camera shops you can buy it new. I've checked a couple and it, it was out of, out of stock, uh, but there's loads of second hand bodies on the market and you still might find a bargain, so it's half the price of a Z6 II. So if it was just stills I was taking, then I'd go for the D500, even now, although all the research and development money is going to, into mirrorless bodies, so they will be the future. But the thing is, I'm a, what you'd call a hybrid shooter now. I photograph, um, still I use uh, video, I shoot video footage, and I take stills pictures. And when it comes to video, the Z6 II just is way, way, way better than the D500. Firstly, it's got an electronic viewfinder, which means I can um, track the action in the viewfinder without having to put it into live view on the back of the screen. Uh, and it's almost impossible to track an animal in live view like that. You just can't do it. Whereas with the um, Z6 II, the electronic viewfinder, I can be shooting video and tracking the animal. So the electronic viewfinder is fantastic. And the video capabilities of the Z6 II are way, way better. I can shoot 120 frames a second slow motion. The quality is better. So if it comes to a choice between one or the other, and this is a comparison video uh, for a stills photographer that does very little video, because you can still shoot video on this, it's it, video on this, it's just harder. I would go for the D500 because it's cheaper and it's a great camera uh, to use and it's got certain advantages such as battery life, uh, the image quality is brilliant and also it's very rugged. If I'm shooting video and stills I'll go for the Z6 II and as I do that, as I shoot both of those things, I tend to pick up the Z6 II now rather than the D500. So I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a thumbs up, a like, that would be brilliant. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can think about subscribing, that would be brilliant. And if you can give this video a share, that would be also good. And if you've got any comments about the kit you use, drop them in the uh, comment section below. So bye for now guys and I'll speak to you on my next video.